Hello everyone and a very happy new year to you all. I'm Lisa Taggart and today we're going to look at my creative process and some techniques to create this little Northern Lights type scene. I'm often asked to do this so if you're interested in that let me take you through the materials first of all. To begin we've got the watercolour hot press card. We're also using the masking sheets uh, and the large blender as well. A mister spray, um, any type of uh, water spray would do. And for the colour, we're starting off with the dinkles. We've got pine green and yellow, porcelain and blueberry. We've got blue dragon and Payne's grey. And finally, pink as well. And we're mixing some of these. We've got medieval blue and bluebell uh, for the versifying clair, along with nocturne for the stamping. I'm also using pan pastels, these are optional, titanium white and Hansa yellow, violet and magenta. We've got uh, phthalo blue and ultramarine extra dark. And uh, finally then we've got black and turquoise. But you can use pen pencils or pastel sticks, whatever you have. A pencil and a pair of scissors for the masking sheets. Also some blenders of any type for the pan pastels and the putty eraser, uh, that's another type of blender you may have. Um, I've got the Posca pen in white and my stencil brush to do the um, snow. I've also got this little applicator to help uh, remove the dinkles. This brush, it's the number 300 from the large set. We've got white gel pen and a dark coloured uh, pastel pencil, black or dark brown. In terms of the stamps, we've got uh, reindeer in large. We've got the fairy fir tree in small and the fir tree one and the gyp stamp as well. So if you want to convert all of those into something that looks a little like this, just keep on watching. So to begin with, we've got our preparation. We've cut our watercolour card into six by nine inches. We've also chopped our masking sheet down to six by three and three quarter inches to fit along the bottom third of the card. I've also cut the shape of the horizon line, which is really just a couple of hills with a little dip in the centre. Um, and I'll show you how I've drawn out the foreground landscape. So I'm going to just deepen that down for you now. And as I say, you're starting off with um, a couple of hills and this is the bottom third of the card. And the rest is really zigzags, as you can see, and then tailing out uh, towards each side and vary the shape of the zigzags and then trail it out to the side. A couple of lines then to indicate the demarcation for the banks and that's pretty much it. You can take a screenshot of that if you want to copy it. So I'm then removing the backing for this masking sheet. It's got a sticky back and I'm placing that down just to protect the bottom from the dinkles. Now in mixing the colours I'm using the pink neat and I've mixed a little bit of that with uh, water in my tray and I use this little applicator just to hook some a small amount of powder out. I've got the paint grey and I've mixed that neat as well. Now the centre one is a mixture of blue lagoon, blueberry and pink and I was trying to get like a bluey purpley colour. And this is now uh, yellow and Payne's grey, which makes um, an olive green. I've mixed the yellow uh, neat with water. I've also mixed the pine green neat with water. And finally, the porcelain uh, for the white. So that's uh, the dinkles uh, prepared. I'm just adding a little more water just to make sure they're all loosened up. I'm going to spray the top two thirds of the page with uh, water just lightly. And then I'm going to take my brush and spread that out evenly uh, just to dampen the card slightly. Not too saturated. I'm beginning with the yellow and I really want a light paler area in, in the centre. So I'm taking the white and the yellow and spreading that out upwards. Now, it really is a matter of preference, uh, the shape of the colours here. I'm doing them up, up, straight up, but you could, you, you could snake them and twist them a little if you want to do that. But uh, as long as you blend them uh, together and try to avo avoid harsh edges, 
um, that's the, the desired effect. So we've got some lovely bright colours towards the horizon line and now I'm starting to uh, deepen up the sky at the top and draw that down. Now it may be the case that you are quite happy with uh, this uh, stage of the dinkles and that you have created a lovely light show at the bottom with darker sky towards the top and you don't want to interfere with it any further and if that's the case by all means keep it that way but you know me I am fiddling about and spreading things and experimenting and I took my uh, kitchen towel and rubbed some of the dark colour away and now I'm adding some white to lighten up the bottom and uh, in many ways I've lost some of the nice vibrancy at the bottom so um, I, I'll, I'll just uh, carry on with it regardless and go back and forward uh, mixing in the colours until I'm happy with it but I think by using the uh, kitchen towel I ended up with tiny little streaks in it but not to worry I'm going to use the pan pastels to even it out I'm also then going to carry on um, painting the foreground I'm starting off with the Payne's grey at the top there and then um, a little bit of the olive colour and um, so the idea here, here is that I'm going to mix my uh, Payne's grey and my olive and the yellow and I'm going to create the lighter, the lightest part of the banks in the center. And then I'm going to deepen up the banks around the edges and at the front there. So I'm really just laying down um, the different values at this stage and uh, color blocking because later on my process very much involves um, the watercolor base as a first layer. And then I'll uh, I'll take the uh, pastels, whether that be in stick pencil or pan pastel form, and I'll use them to uh, enhance the the what's underneath. Uh, and I and I do and it's I've said this before in videos. It's very much a mixed media approach, which provides second chances. So if you have uh, if you're not happy with what you've placed down with the watercolour and it hasn't turned out quite how you'd hoped, you can fix it with another layer of another medium on top. As you can see, I'm carrying on with uh, deepening up the front of the banks and just creating a, 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 a bit of interest, really. Different colours along uh, in sort of uh, um, bands, really, across the banks and making sure that... Uh, the lightest part is towards the center because bear in mind there will be to some extent a reflection of the colors from the sky in in the land below so that's what i'm trying to achieve really to have a bright aspect to the ground and uh, a bit of contrast in terms of values so that there will be some very deep parts and some very uh, very much paler parts as you can see, I'm dipping my brush into the darker tones now and um, creating some uh, deeper parts around the edges. And now what I'm doing is I'm taking that purpley colour. Um, and if I'm honest, it's a wee bit too purple for my liking at this stage, but I persevered with it anyway. And I'm just adding in um, some uh, of that colour around the edges of the bank. And I'm thinking that I'll just um, add in, I'll colour block it basically in this colour and go back to my blues at a later stage. Um, in the end, up it works out quite well because um, putting in this um, uh, f fine layer of a purpley, bluey purpley colour allows it to peek through later on. And that's the magic of mixed media, that uh, some parts will peek through uh, uh, the, the additional layers. So that's what it looks like now that it's dry and um, the next thing to do then is to darken uh, the top edge down and try to blend it lightly throughout the bright coloured part. Now if yours looks good at this stage I would recommend you stop and if you didn't get the streaks that I've got, um, brilliant, uh, you don't need to use the pan pastels. Um, but I've decided just to carry on with it um, to add the different colour blues and now to build up uh, some of the bright colours again using my pastels. 
Now, I'm very comfortable using pastels and I think they're really my thing. Um, I love the, the way you can blend them out and alter what's what's below. But as I said, I'm really using the, the first layer. It's not wasted. Um, this is part of my creative process where uh, I have the colours um, in, a, in a base form and that then also then gives the pastel something to attach to um, because pastels are used to having um, darker colour card and don't really perform very well just added to blank white sheets of paper. So if there's a coloured um, watercolour background underneath they behave a little a little better. So as you can see, I'm mixing my strong colours with white and I'm taking care to use my applicator and blend out the edges because as, as I'm sure you're aware, the Northern Lights um, has this ethereal look where there are like long tails of, of bright colour, but it's very much blended out and no sort of stark lines and all the colours blend into each other. So I'm taking time to, um, I'm using the turquoise at the minute. I've used blue, I've used the pink, I've used the white. I'm adding more turquoise there to the side, a little white to blend that in. So it's, it's actually quite fun using the pastels. And if you've got uh, pastel pencils, you can also do this. And really, it's um, it's fun because you can make it up as you go along. Yours will not look exactly like this. Yours will be very different. I'm taking some purple now because I can and it's fun and mixing the colours, the blues, the purples, the turquoise, the pinks and of course the yellows and the whites. All the while taking care to blend out the edges until I create in my head what what seems to be the desired effect of the lights um, blending into each other in the background and I'm also very much aware that I'm going to be stamping trees on top of this so there you are it's blended out now and it creates a nice backdrop for the trees I've also added a little blue to the top parts of the hill there and I'm taking my dark um, ultramarine extra dark um, and uh, going along the edges now and I'm going to gradually start to build up the, um, the the banks in the foreground and I'll do that by starting off with the dark blue and then gradually um, building that up uh, using the black and uh, the yellow as well so it's just saying what works. Um, at this point, I've taken uh, a blue. Uh, yes, it's still the dark blue, but I also then use the phalo blue to, um, I suppose there it is now, to reflect what's in the sky. And at this stage, it is what I describe as the ugly stage where everything is just, um, you know, not, not carefully blended and looks a bit haphazard and... Uh, the, the the thing to do is not to panic <laughs> just to keep going with it because white is your best friend once you add the white and then blend the colours together um, it all makes sense obviously there will be a lighter uh, amount of white uh, in the water um, towards the middle and the edges will be darker and then there'll be a few little streaks of, of blue across the white. There'll be dark edges to the banks and as you can see I'm, ta I'm taking the black and uh, deepening the, the sides of the bank that are at the, at the very front of, of the picture and using a small amount of the black to um, uh, delineate the edges of the banks. Blending all of that in until it looks a little like that. Now the stamping so we've uh, really prepared the background for the stars of the show and I'm taking this glorious um, steer reindeer and I, al I also had in my head that I wanted his head and his um, antlers to be in the pale part of the centre of the picture. That's why I wanted the yellow and white in the centre. So that draws your eye to his, his head. I'm going to... Uh, 
put this ma masking sheet back and it's slightly above the edge of the hills this time and you'll see why when I remove it. And I'm taking my dark uh, pastel blue. Again, you can use pencils or pastel sticks for this as well. And I'm just deepening that at the edge. And when I remove this masking sheet, you'll see that it creates a coloured um, reflection underneath. Um, and there's like a little fine line of that, which just adds to the interest of the picture. I'm taking my Nocturne in the Versafine Claire, inking up uh, the top half of the stamp and then just stamping off the edge of the picture just to give it a frame. Now I'm taking the smaller tree and any of your fir trees will do for this. Um, the Lavinia stamps do lots of different types and sizes of fir trees. So just a mixture of things. And if you don't have fir trees or the, the fairy trees um, you can use your um, ordinary trees any trees that you have just to create like a forest effect either side and where you think um, the trees aren't dark enough you can also fill parts of them in with your dark pastel pencil and I think I do that later on with that particular tree that I've just stamped and so you're you're framing the picture by adding um, both first and second generation stamping and to, until it looks uh, something like that. And lastly, I'm taking this little gyp stamp just for extra texture, really. Um, there's lots of different um, stamps you could use for this uh, to create that twig-like effect. Um, this happened to be out on my desk and I thought, why not? <laughs> so I give it a go and there you are. So remove that and you can see the top of the hill has that little reflection that I referred to and it, it all adds to the interest of the picture. There you are. Now next I'm taking my pastels again and I'm going to do some shadows and highlights with the dark, uh, extra dark ultramarine. Um, nothing too fancy, just something um, to indicate that there's a little shadow in front of the reindeer. Now I'm taking my lovely turquoise colour, which is a very useful colour for uh, water and sky and all sorts of things, and adding a highlight on the top of his back. And I think in a minute or two, I'll zoom you in so you can see that a little bit better. Yes, there we are. And then taking a dark pastel pencil or any dark pencil, coloured pencil would do, just adding in again the definition and creating more depth to the shadows below the hooves. And uh, I've decided to put some light reflection under the belly as well. And I think I also add some to the antlers just on one side where the, the sky might be um, lighting them up. Yeah, there you are. Now I'm just taking the same pencil and I'm flicking uh, some random grass at different heights and different sizes uh, just very roughly. If you have some little stamps that you would like to use instead of this by all means that would also look good and it's just a variety of uh, lines and I'm then repeating that with my white gel pen which isn't behaving very well. Um, it's coming out a bit blotchy but I run with it anyway and um, as long as it's just an uh, sort of adding some texture and it looks like it's um, been touched by the light. Something a little like that. That, And then, of course, add in some sparkle to the water. It always brings it to life when you add a few little dots of, um, of white here and there. You can see the purple shining through as well. And now, uh, finally, I think I'm going to add some snow. It's January and it's usually a very snowy month in the UK. So we still haven't got rid of the snowy pictures. <laughs> so I thought of it, I may as well. It just adds to the atmosphere as well. And you just give it a good old bladder and uh, you'll get these lovely random dots which um, create a more authentic snow than drawing them individually. And if you don't want snow but you would like stars, make sure you mask off um, the uh, bottom half of the picture, including the reindeer. 
And there you have it. Uh, the project is complete. I've just uh, uh, framed it up onto blue complementary card and a black little fine black frame. And really it was to take you through my creative process. Um, some things were successful, some things weren't. It's not a picture as with all my videos where you can you know, replicate it exactly. The idea is for me to show you techniques that will um, build up your your repertoire in terms of um, knowledge and, and creating your own versions of the pictures. So I hope you do that and you have fun. You'll look after yourselves until next time. But above all, get creating, be brave and enjoy the adventure.